So we're going to go move into case study two. Patient has lower back pain and has seen 16 physical therapists in four years, in addition to weekly massages, acupuncture, chiropractic visits. Pain is not relieved by rest or change in activity. Unbearable left flank pain. Reports pain limits her ability to work, participate in competitive athletics, especially with any side-to-side -side motion and start-stop motion like tennis. Intense stabbing with forward bending, so reaching down into a drawer in the refrigerator. Patient reports sleeping up to 14 hours or more a day. Suffers from extreme food allergies. Reports that trigger point therapy provided by PM&R provides relief for only a few days at best. Has difficulty sitting for long periods of time due to glute pain. Glute medius pain is so severe on the left she had to give up teaching yoga. Back pain makes it difficult for her to sleep. All of the surgical films that you've seen in this portion of the lecture, not the prolapse ones, but all of the surgical video and film that you have seen are my own surgical films. I have, or had, stage four endometriosis. I sat just where you guys sat with this disease growing inside me, I knew nothing of endometriosis. We never in my three year education mentioned the word endometriosis. I have two master's degrees and an athletic trainer license. I didn't hear the word endometriosis until Padma Lakshmi got pregnant and they announced what it was on Entertainment Tonight. I'm a doctorate. That's how I learned what I had. I saw in a seven month period 18 gynecologists. I was extremely lucky to find the surgeon that I used. When I was a student here, we had a hip lab, uh, which you'll have in your second year, and I was the demo. And I had my period. And I bled so heavily on the table, I had to pull my clothes over me. And I couldn't leave until the entire room was empty. That was nothing when we did the therapeutic exercise lab and we were on the therapy balls, I fell off and took a direct fall onto my sacrum and I never was able to walk the same until I had surgery seven years later. When I sat in these seats, I needed a pillow for my back or I had to stand. I got yelled at plenty by professors because I needed to take these lectures standing up. That's because I had deep infiltrative endometriosis of the rect rectovaginal septum. I couldn't sit. I couldn't sit for longer than 20 minutes. And it took me, with everything that I have available to me in medicine, this meant so many years. It took over 15 years for me to have diagnosis. And that's with what I have available. You know, that's how I ended up doing what I do, because I wanted women everywhere to know that treatment is out there and help is on its way. Last year, I gave this lecture, uh, and it was great. You know, you guys have seen it. And um, I never got paid because I couldn't fill out the paperwork. I needed an emergency hernia repair. I split my incisions while lifting a patient. Okay, when they did the hernia repair, my belly button coincidentally bleeds every time I get my period, okay? I woke up this morning and I was in a ball and laying there crying. This is the heaviest day of my cycle. I am heavily medicated. I had no idea. I had a nice dress and high heels picked out and we're down to the linen yoga, yoga pants and a platform heel just to be able to stand here and talk to you. This disease is no joke. And if I had known what was going to go on, if I knew what it was, earlier diagnosis would have changed my life forever. Every breath that I take now is somehow altered by having had this grow inside me. And I hope that you take it extremely, extremely seriously. My career is delayed, to say the least, by endometriosis. I spent a lot of years working in pediatrics because it's a shorter day um, and it allowed me, there's extreme fatigue involved in endo and it allowed me to get into bed earlier. 
I do love the kitties. I really do. I have a good time with them. But that's how it started. I just couldn't take the demands of the hospital floor. Um, I'm not able to buy my own home because of the financial dis impacts of this disease. And ever since last year when I had the second surgery, I'm always looking over my shoulder that endometriosis will rear its ugly head at me again. That it won't be just cramps. And I'm an older, I'm, I'm not that old, I'm not ancient, but I am older and I do think about, you know, my choices in life are very much made for me. I don't have a child yet. Um, and I haven't come to terms with what it'll be like to have this disease and have to make maybe peace with not having a child. I don't know. I can't tackle that. Um, it's just not something I can get to. We as physical therapists, we have a chance to reach a lot of people, not just the patients we touch, but what we do in life can impact so many people. And I've really taken that with me and taken it seriously as I've lived my life with this disease. It's really not easy to stand here and show you what my uterus and what my ovaries look like on film. It's equally not as easy to go around the world and say, this is who I am and this is what happened to me and I'm the average everyday lady. I'm sure it can happen to us all. But I, I do it because I feel that was a responsibility that we had with our license. I took that really, really seriously. And um, I hope that you all find in some way how to use your licenses to, to help people as well. You know, I've taught you the warning signs today. I've also showed you a little bit about what life is like for me. Um, I, I could not play tennis before um, my surgery without spotting pretty heavily. And yet um, I managed to qualify for USDA Nationals this year um, through <laughs> hernia and all. I, um, I feel every day I try to make progress and I try to go to bed at night reminding myself what that progress is because otherwise you're swallowed completely by how a demon you never even understood existed just covered over and, and engulfed your life without you knowing about it. And there are moments I feel like I never had a chance to truly live. I never had what everybody else had. And then I remind myself, I do have medical license, and I'm able to use it, and a lot of women don't have that. And I have met incredible people all around the world who um, suffer with this disease, who work towards the day when we have a cure and when we have better solutions. And I get through it, and that's it. There's no choices. I hope that you are able to recognize the signs and symptoms and to understand um, what would go on with your patients and to really feel what it's like to take a moment to walk in their shoes. It's not an easy, uh, not an easy journey at all. So I just want to say one thing back.